it's me. I'm stuck inside the computer. Ah, uh, just kidding. I'm still at school. <clears throat> Lesson nine. You guys are going to be so excited. We're not doing number lines. We're not doing modeling. All we're doing is finding equivalent fractions. It's going to be great. Here goes nothing. Okay, guys, here's the deal. We are going to be doing in lesson nine, um, we are going to add fractions making like units numerically. So what that means, as I mentioned earlier, is that we are just going to be using the standard algorithm to find equivalent fractions <clears throat> um, and add them together. So you can see one fifth plus two thirds, those denominators are not the same. We cannot add them until we um, find a common denominator between five and three. And you guys basically already know how to do that, but let, I'm just going to make one point before we get into that work. If we, I just wanna explain why it works. If we have one, fifth and we multiply it by one or we make one copy of it what do we end with what do we what is our product okay yes one fifth if you make one copy of one fifth you're going to end up with whatever you started with because you're I mean you're just multiplying it by one you guys know this already a fraction form of one can be five over five 5 over 5, 5 fifths is equal to 1. Everyone's comfortable with that, right? Okay, so if we multiply 1 fifth, my button is stuck on my pen, you guys, and it's giving me a lot of grief. If I multiply 1 fifth, sorry that's so sloppy, by 5 fifths, keep in mind 5 fifths is just another version of 1. We're going to end up with 5 fifths. 20 fifths. 5 25ths is equivalent to 1 fifth. They represent the exact same amount. But we've multiplied 1 fifth by a version of 1. This version of 1 is 5 fifths. So we know without a shadow, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that 5 25ths is equal to 1 fifth. These Happy fractions are what we call equivalent fractions. They represent the same amount because yes, they look different. Yes, the digits are different, but we multiplied it by this uh, one fifth by one. You guys know when we multiply something by one, the value doesn't change. So that's why the standard algorithm works. We're going to take a look at it right now, but I just want you guys to keep this in mind. When we multiply anything by one, yes, <clears throat> The digits may change, but please remember that one-fifth and five-twenty-fifths are what we call equivalent fractions. So fr those fractions represent the same amount. Cool? Okay. I'm just getting real excited about that. Um, let's clear that, and let's just look at one-fifth plus two-thirds. So you guys, in your intimate knowledge and wisdom... Uh, probably immediately recognize that, oh, five and three are not the same number. Indeed, you are correct. Thank you uh, for pointing that out, Miss uh, Miss Sienna. So before we can add these together, we need to find a common denominator. Here's one way we can do that. We're going to skip count up here by fives, five, 10, 15, 20. And now we're going to skip count by threes, three, gosh the button three six oh my gosh I hope my I don't have to get a new pen sorry you guys this pen just gets stuck so three grr six grr nine oh my word I am so mad at my pen right now three oh you guys <sighs> lordy three six Oh my gosh, I feel like a ghost has come into my pen and is giving me so much trouble. You guys, this is, see, I'm not pressing anything. I am so sorry, you guys. This must be incredibly distracting. All I want to do is math, please. Oh my gosh. Okay, so three, six, nine. Oh, I'm going to try to use my mouse. This is going to be... 
a nightmare. Um, 12. <laughs> 15. I'm happy you guys have a sense of humor. We're going to need it for this lesson. So skip counting. I did 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. What were the reason why we're skip counting is that we're looking for a common denominator. We're looking for some number that when we skip count by fives and threes, we were looking for some number that they share in common. So I see 15 up here. I'm going to give my pen a break. Hopefully it'll start behaving again. And I see 15 down here. That means, woohoo, we found a common denominator, 15. So now what we need to think about, you guys, is, oh my stars. Now what we need to think about is, why is this doing it? Is we're going to convert... We're going to convert, oh my gosh, you guys, this is so bad, <gasps> so bad. We're going to convert one-fifth and two-thirds into two new fractions, two equivalent fractions with denominators of 15 because using our skip, our skip counting above, we found that they share a common denominator of 15. But we need to figure out Here's where I'm rewriting the expression. We need to figure out, you know, I'm just going to um, clear that because that's insane. I'm using my mouse now to write, you guys, so I'm sorry it's going to be a little sloppy because my pen for some reason is just having a rough day. Um, okay, so we're going to convert one-fifth and two-thirds to equivalent fractions now with a denominator of 15. So what we need to think about is what can I multiply 5 by? to transform it into 15. In other words, five times something, five times something is 15. Abdullah, five times what is 15? Abdullah, three, beautiful. Abdullah is telling me five times three is 15 and Abdullah, you are certainly correct. Now you guys have to keep in mind, remember those jealous, insanely jealous numerators and denominators. If we're going to multiply five by three, what do we have to do to one? What do we have to multiply our numerator by? Or else it's going to throw a huge fit. We have to, thank you, I said that Addison, we have to multiply one by three if we're going to multiply five by three. We have to treat them exactly the same. So we multiply five by three and we get 15. We multiply one by three and we get three. Okay, very good. So now we've just found an equivalent fraction. We've just found that one-fifth is equal to three-fifteenths. We multiplied the top by three and the bottom by three. We multiplied one-fifth one -fifth by three-thirds. Three-thirds, as you guys know, three-thirds, as you guys know, is equal to one. So all we're, real, all we're doing, you guys, is we're multiplying these fractions by different versions of 1 to convert them into uh, new fractions with common denominators, with the same denominators. The reason why we're doing this is that we need common denominators or the same denominators, the same number on the bottom, um, in order to add or subtract fractions. Okay, so now let's look at 2 thirds. Now we're going to convert 2 thirds into an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 15. So now we have to think, hmm, what can I do? What can I multiply 3 by? What can I multiply 3 by, lordy, to make, uh, to get 15? So 3 times what is 15? 3 times what is 15? Think about it. Evan, thank you. Evan just told me that 3 times 5 is 15. Okay. And then Fiona is already thinking, well, if you're going to multiply 3 by 5, you have to multiply 2 by 5 because numerators and denominators are insanely jealous of one another. And if you're not treating them the exact same way, they're going to throw huge fits and it's going to be super embarrassing. Okay, so 3 times 5 is 15. I'm just rewriting this expression here at the bottom rather slop sloppily, but I'm, I'm writing it. And then 2 times 5 is 10. Okay, so now we've just found the equivalent fraction of 10 fifteenths. Cool, so 2 thirds and 10 fifteenths represent the same value. They're just different versions. Okay, can we add 3 tenths I'm sorry, can we add 3 fifteenths and 10 fifteenths? We certainly can. 3 plus 10, as our very own Nithra is telling us, is 13. 
And then we are just going to carry over that common denominator. Final answer, 13 fifteenths. That was really fun. Thanks for hanging in there with me, you guys. Okay, kiddos, another way that we can find our common denominator um, is we, so we just did the skip counting technique. We can also, let's choose this color. We can also just multiply our denominators together. I'm going to try the pen again. Cross your fingers. Maybe it will work. Just work, little pen. Just work. Um, so we just looked at skip counting. Um, so that's one way, can, one way we can find a common denominator. Another way we can find a com common denominator is that we can just multiply our denominators together. So let's look at this. 4 ninths plus 4 sevenths. We can just do 9 times 7. I think I fixed my pen. 9 times 7 is equal to, thank you, Louie, 63. So a common denominator between 9 and 7 is 63. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert both of these fractions into uh, new fractions with a denominator of 63. So <clears throat> we just multiplied 9 by 7 to get 63. If we multiply 9 by 7, <laughs> there's my friend Rachel telling me that she misses me. Um, if we multiply 9 by 7, what do we have to do to the numerator? We have to multiply Thank you very much, Charlie. We have to multiply the numerator by 7. 4 times 7 is, thank you, Charlie, 28. Okay, so let's look at 4 sevenths. We multiplied 7 by 9 to get 63. What do we have to do to the numerator? We have to multiply the numerator by 9 um, as well because you know, you know how that goes. 4 times 9. Hmm, four times nine. Who can help me with that one? Cole, four times nine? Thank you. 36. Okay, so now we have 28 60 thirds and 36 60 thirds. We're going to add them together. Um, don't be shy to just do that on the side. 28 plus 36. 8 plus 6. Thank you, Tanner, is 14. For your ones, so we have 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6. So what we have here are 64 60 thirds. This is what we call an improper fraction. Um, this number represents, you guys, who can let me know, is it one whole, greater than one whole, or less than one whole? Who has that answer for me? Thank you, Charlotte. Charlotte's telling us that 64 60 thirds represents a larger, a number larger than one whole because the upstairs is larger than the downstairs. So let's go ahead and simplify this. 64. Hmm. We can take 64 and decompose it into 63 and 1. Um, 63 and 1 when added together is 64. So we can pull out, actually let's just decompose 64, 60, 64, 60 thirds. We can decompose 64, 60 thirds to 63, 60 thirds plus 1, 60 third. So 63 over 63, as you guys know, is another, is a fancy way for the number one. To simplify 64 60 thirds, we can simplify that into one whole with one 63rd left over. Um, this brings me to a very important uh, announcement. The secret word is diaper. Her sus class, you know why the secret word is diaper. My, my class, my other class, the Ninja Baby Tigers, I'll let you know tomorrow why the secret word is diaper. It's a funny story. Kendi. <laughs>